everyone. It's uh, September the 12th, just coming up to 7.30 a.m. Head into the show early this morning. Um, typically get here in reasonable time to try and get a parking spot at the, at the dealer lot. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and do a, a little bit of a walk around this morning because I haven't seen much of the show. Never usually do just because it's usually so busy, but uh, if I go a little bit early, it gives a chance to, to check things out. So after you park in the dealer lot, it's just a quick little walk right in. I actually am cutting right through Kubota right now. So they've got a massive booth. Nice big building that they've put up over the years. They do it up pretty good here. On reverse. And then the, the Echo booth. Massey 530 sprayer. Haven't seen a whole lot of this yet, but a lot of features the same as what the Rogators have been over the years. Gleaner. And then this whole side is Massey. Everything from the little 6S up through uh, to the 8S. The only one that didn't get here this year was the, the 9. I thought we actually might see that, but. Um, They've got a, an 8735 here, which is what they're saying is the high horsepower unit for right now. And then as you carry through, we get over into more of the stuff that I'm playing with. I do do some massy stuff here and there, but that tends to be more of a, more of the key stuff that works for me. So we got a couple smaller units, 200, 300, and you get into the two 500s here. And then the new 620 that just was announced at uh, our show here, Farm Progress, it was announced there as well. It's, uh, I put it as being sort of a middle of the road to an exact spot in the middle of a five and a seven. A little bit more weight, a little more power, but as nimble and, and maneuverable as what the, the 500s are. 720, new 728 on skinnies. Big 11.56. And then down this side, um, this is where I've been standing most of the show. I've got a couple 900s, the Momentum Planner, 1050, the 7T Combine, and then uh, the Fent Rogators up on the front here. That's what uh, former company HGV, they, uh, they specialize in that. So Brian Smith and Mike Kuntz are sort of the main guys that look after, look after that. So this is uh, Advantage is 1038. So we'll get to do some demos with that this fall. A couple chisel plow, deep rip and stuff that we'd like to get it out on for the next week or so. And then our 930, also ours, it's gonna be out on demo two. Uh, I got a couple manure, manure demos that guys wanna play with. Um, a couple guys that just wanna use it for grain buggy when we run the ideal. So. We'll see that one here over the next month, month and a half. 1050s from another dealership. And then our 7T. So this will be my baby for the fall, helping the other sales guys out a little bit too to, to be able to get that up and running. So our Gearinghoff heads come in over on the other side here. We uh, work with another company called Schulten Machinery. They're the dealer for Gearinghoff, but we work pretty close with them. I've done it for years for all the combines that I've sold and I just love their products. So this is uh, our 40 foot head, TrueFlex Razor. It's got the 
hydraulic gauge wheels that are always moving on the back end to keep that knife centered when we're doing soybeans, but it also works in wheat so that we can cut a consistent four, six, eight inches, whatever you decide you want to off the ground to be able to, uh, to keep it cutting properly, consistently across the whole head. Knife drives in the middle. I didn't think that I would like, but I actually do. You can see everything and know what's going on. It's a bit of maintenance. You got to grease it every day with a lot of grease, but uh, so far I really like it. So one of the things I thought that I might do this morning is uh, obviously we're going to see lots of stuff that I'm working with, but don't usually get a direct comparison sometimes as to what other brands are actually trying to sell against me. And I thought that might be something that uh, would be interesting. Um, so coming up the alleyway here, literally just right across the road is Case, which has always been a, a direct comparison for everything. They, uh, they've got really good combines, got a couple big uh, tractors that, that go against our, our fence stops. So I guess the first thing is this uh, 555, goes all the way up to a 715, but it's the new Steiger quad track line. Um, obviously it tires as well, but that's, uh, that's new for this year. And then combine wise, they've gone and thrown a new number on the, their base combines, which is flagship combines, which used to be an 8250, which is an 8260 now. Um, great machine in beans and corn. And, uh, my understanding is that the, the guts down the middle are fairly similar. They've done some automation changes, some cab changes with the, the new uh, 1200 monitor and everything, but always a good comparison for us, always a, a contender that we're fighting against to try and get business from. And then obviously we've, everyone's hearing about stuff from Welkers and a bunch of other YouTubers that the new AF series is out. And sure enough, they've got an AF9 here. Um, so the AF11 that Welkers are running is a twin rotor. This AF9 is a single rotor, but a bit longer from, than what uh, the 8250 or 8260 next to us was. So you can see here, looks similar, but as you say, it's it's a bit longer. 3D cleaning shoe that they're taking sort of the same design as what Kloss used at one point to be able to make the rotational motion on the on the sibs so that they can do hills and everything. She's a big one. And then when they did this AF series, they were able to get Macdon to be able to come in and produce their heads now. So this is a Case IH labeled FD250 by Macdon. And I've always been a fan of their heads. They, uh, they're simple, they're easy, they, they work. So this is a 50 footer. The only thing I find a little sketchy about these machines is this auger boot. I don't get that. That thing's massive. And I just, I think it actually makes it shorter so it comes down into a buggy and you don't have any dumb space, but I'm not sure about that. We'll have to watch that and see what happens with it. So from the previous life, uh, this was one of my favorite pieces of equipment to work with, Horsch Lieb. So this is a new 2025 design, new cab, new front re reload, some other things, but I always, uh, thoroughly enjoyed those machines. Porsche corn planter, direct comparison to, uh, to uh, momentum. And some high speed tillage and a 10 inch drill. Kloss, again, also a former life. Was my passion for a long time dealing with their combines. They, uh, they've got a 7500 here that's been wrapped for a customer here in Ontario. And 
then obviously their new unit they've just released is the Zarian 12. So just walking through here and obviously advantage is, is Agco, I told you that before. Um, they also do a bunch of short line stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, Wacker Newsom, um, Cub Cadet, uh, Bobcat. Haven't had a whole lot of dealings with Bobcat, but they have some really nice product. They've taken the old Steiner and bought it and made it into a new machine. Skid steers, excavators. I didn't realize it, but they've got their own zero turn line now too. So get to dabble on that a little bit here, possibly if there's people that are interested, which can be kind of fun. So one of the other product lines that I've played with in the past too was uh, was Kuhn. Um, I was able to do that at the old dot that I worked, and now. There's Mr. Ken. Hey, Morning. Morning. So one of these uh, Kuhn Axis spreaders was one of my favorite things to sell. Um, European spreader, massive spreading woods, high accuracy. Doesn't work the best in a blended product. You got to still pan test it, but straight products, urea, straight potash, whatever. It's uh, it's pretty slick. It. Um, has varying drop points and controlled flow rates down here at the back to be able to. So I'm just gonna head uh, up this alley here. There's Vaderstad, uh, um, very good planting and tillage group that uh, I've competed against in the past that I really like. I'll swing around to New Holland. On, uh, John Deere's over on the far corner, so we'll see them quick and then probably head back to the booth just to uh, make sure that I'm there for when people come. It's dairy day this week, so uh, or dairy day this day, uh, so there'll be lots of people here to, to check things out. So as I say, I really like this, uh, this set of equipment. I had a good friend that worked at Vaderstad for a few years that was pushing pretty hard against things for me, so carrier we got the tempo over here small one and they got the big one that they've just released now with the uh, new carrier system liquid system on it center fill tracks bit more North Americanized if you want to call it that but they're uh, they're a force to be reckoned with when it comes to planners I'm I'm I truly believe that you can see the new Holland booth coming here just coming past another one that I didn't even think about but though uh, it's far as uh, it's gaining some traction here in Ontario. There's quite a few people that have them. I really like them. Follow YouTube there. Uh, Mike Les has, uh, I think he's a distributor, regional sales rep for, for Ditsfar. So they're an interesting product to watch. Then you move over to the left and we got Landall. Always somebody competitive in tillage. Go ahead. Short discs, chisel plows. <clears throat> and we get into New Holland and uh, and their stuff right now. So regular CR looks like down the back there. New CR here. She's she's a big one just like that AF. A few 
feeder house appears to be about the same width as most others. Low tracks. of double rotors up in here. They're huge. Crep pants. And they still have a re-thrasher on both sides. Chap spreader that swings down into place is also a regular spreader by the looks of it. And that great big loading chute. Don't get it. So you take these big combines and they're they're massive. They they do a ton of work. Less people do you have to hire to be able to run them. But they're for large farmers. You go to trade them in a year, I'm seeing 50% depreciation in two years. And I don't know what that's going to do to this combine market with all these big ones coming in. There's no home for them. I still think that seven, eight, nine is still the perfect size for, for the majority of, of people. Ontario, sort of down into that central Michigan, Ohio type of thing like that because there's a value to be able to take them somewhere else. And you take a class 10, a class 11, whatever anybody else comes up with, it might be a class 12 down the road. The resale value just isn't going to be there for those. So just walking the deer now, one of the groups that I used to do a little bit of stuff back in a previous life was, was noon. I had a few of their pumps. They're always coming up with new stuff. Alley scrapers, self-propelled. Floating agitators, massive electrosteer tanks. Taking this pump to a four dish three discharge spot to be able to get more flow. See it's a one, two, three. It's massive. Small pit pump. And then we get into mother deer. Always a big show here. They always bring a lot of stuff, which is, uh, it's a draw. There's nothing wrong with it. Some application stuff, lawnmowers. Walk down this side here, I think, for the tractors. 6120E. 6R, 6195M. New 6R, 230. 7R, 230. It's interesting to put the two of them side by side and actually see there's very little difference between the two of them. Radar. So that'll be a direct comparison to, on the smaller side, our 900 series in the Fent. But um, in the higher horsepower, you get up to a four, gets a 410 or a 400, getting up into the 1038 with the frame size. One of their VTs on the back. Yeah, so it's an 8R410. 
New 9R. And that's where we're running a, a 1050 against these on the on the smaller side, and then we'll go in with a tracked 11 100 series, 1156, 1167 on the higher side. You got your radar 410, like I said, new max emerge planner. I'm running the airbags on the back of the closing system. Motor drive is from here back to a gearbox, which then runs over into your seed plate. A little bit different. I've never seen that actually before. I've only ever seen the precision, the V set. So this will be a, a 31, 32 row center fill liquid starter on it. Big, uh, big air cart that they've released here this year. Some high speed tillage, speed disc, 2680. Looks like a, a quick till. And then the the new release, the new S7. Very similar to a S series 780, 770. Changed the design on the outside, a little bit of stuff in the cab. It's more automatics, I guess, but pretty much still the same combine from what I've been able to figure out. And lastly, before we go back to the booth, the X9 with the, I think it's a 50 foot flexible cuttable platform. Power tailboard. This is your discharge for, for straw. You can see up in there the discharge beater with crates underneath of it to try and get more crop out. So this is a double rotor machine, two rotor machine. So it's got a cylinder in the front, double rotor, another cylinder discharge beater in the back, and then a rethrasher to try and help get everything else set that they're missed. And that looks like a one of the wing flex 50 footer. So that 1100 is a direct comparison to, uh, well, it's not really a direct comparison. It'd, it'd be to our 10T or 10, ideal 10. Something that's becoming more popular is these stone crushers. These are, this is bug nut. I've seen them before when I've been with some customers out to, out in Eastern Ontario many years ago. And you can see there's what it started off at with the stones and what it finished off after they run the the unit through it. It's pretty impressive. You don't see them quite as much around here, but it's becoming more popular. Spray drones. Always a hot thing. I think one day that they will uh, they will find a place obviously especially in Ontario right now we don't have licensing to be able to to use them um, on many chemicals whatsoever that way so that's gotta gotta come in but I think there's places I've seen video with uh, Millennial Farmer where they came in and did a demo for him on a bunch of acres and I mean, you have a couple of those rigs you can spray a thousand acres a day just like a ground rig if you've got yourself set up to be able to nurse them properly so 
that's pretty impressive. Um, I don't know about the coverage of certain Sarahs. I uh, have always been a waterman when it comes to spraying. You you need volume to be able to get the coverage, and when you're spraying two to three gallons to the acre, I'm not sure how that's going to work. But I've been doing it in the aerial service from airplanes and helicopters for years, so there's got to be some principles that have carried over for that. I didn't have a head on the 11 over in the home booth it's because they got it sitting here in the the Macdon booth it's another FD2 I believe this is a 50 footer again so it'll be fairly similar to that case head that we showed on the, the AF9 that one sitting over here with a the duck feet on it. I'm going to show you that in a second. And they've got the new corn heads that they've released. Heard good things about them. I haven't run one before. I'm uh, pretty brand loyal to, to Gehringhoff with the stuff I've done just because it seems to work and I haven't had really a reason to, to go away from it. But, well, and actually, this isn't part of, part of Macdon. This is a Gehringhoff razor that they put the duck feet on. So they're designed to sweep more on the knife when you've got low-lying beans that uh, you can't get to feed through. Um, they seem to work really well on a full flex knife where the knife to reel contact isn't quite as tight when it's in a really deep flex portion of it. So when it comes up, those paddles give it a quick kick and clears that knife off so it doesn't bunch up and build up and then start falling over the front. So it's uh, they've been around for a while, but they're starting to get adopted a little bit more here with the, the way these draper heads are going and stuff yeah so that's unfortunately all the time i've got to be able to walk around i gotta get back over to the booth here but uh wanted to show you some of the other brands out there that are on my tail every day or i'm on their tail every day trying to sell against and everybody's got good product there's no issues there whatsoever um every machine breaks every company has decent service right now that if you're uh, you're loyal to that company there's no reason to switch so it's one of the biggest things that as a, a sales company a salesperson you're fighting against is if you don't have a reason to switch from one color to another that's the battle you fight anyways hope everybody enjoyed seeing a little bit of different stuff here as a comparison to what I sell not only what we do um, if there's anything you'd like to see in these videos by all means please uh, let me know down in the comments. Let me know. I'm happy to do it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.